Hey everyone and welcome to the Zest 2.5 channel. If you're new here, thank you for visiting and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I raise my hands up, the channel has been a bit dry lately, um, but hopefully I'm back now. Now you probably read the video title and went, oh what about Aladdin or Hercules or Simba? Just calm down, just calm down. I'm going to explain what I mean. I think it's more of a two-way question. Why no Disney prints and are Disney prints going extinct? The first question is more predominant in the Disney Renaissance era from 1989 to 1999, which saw a boom in the adaptation of romance fairy tales, with Disney opting for more simple-minded stories with much more stereotypical characters. While the second question is more predominant in the Disney revival era, which sees a combination of past Disney techniques in screenwriting and also animation. Now throughout Disney's century run, the prince archetype has been a staple in their movie lineups, with the Disney Renaissance era and the Silver Age era really kicking home what a Disney prince is supposed to be, which just comes down to giving the princess her happily ever after. The prince serves very little functional role and they normally play this deuteragonist or tritagonist role where they help back up the princesses. And the worst part is most of the early princes are not that much useful at all. In Snow White and Cinderella, the true heroes are the dwarves and the mice, where you have Prince 1 and Prince 2 as nameless blokes who barely have any screen time. Now if we move just a little bit down the timeline, you then have slightly useful princes who are kind of functional in their story, with Prince Philip from Sleeping Beauty and Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid ultimately slaying their antagonist. The Disney Renaissance era brought a divergence from the overly dependent princess to princesses who have their own ambitions. The Disney princess archetype evolved to show that no longer does the princess wait for others to solve her problem and no longer is love their main ambition. Like in Beauty and the Beast, Belle had a feel for adventure while with Aladdin, Jasmine wishes to be her own person and also tries to make her own choices and with Mulan, she wants to protect her family. With this evolution of the princess archetype also comes changes to the prince archetype. The standout being Aladdin who is arguably the only prince who serves as the main protagonist. Now some people might be screaming what about Tarzan or Simba or Hercules or even Cusco. To me those aren't technically princes. Yeah they do fall under the royalty category but they are not princes by technicality so I'm not going to involve them. It's a bit subjective but um, yeah. Before we go on if you you're enjoying the content please do subscribe and like the video by god's grace we can hit that 1k sub soon it's all down to your support so thank you thank you very much let's get back into it now with aladdin the funny part is even though aladdin was the mc of his story it's actually jasmine who has garnered more popularity in my opinion and that is just straight down to disney's marketing of their princesses but we will talk about that later the disney renaissance era also gave us the beast who in a sense is kind of nameless but he is more involved in his story. In fact the Beast is arguably the MC of the Beauty and the Beast movie. Now there is also Li Shang who was the love interest of Mulan. Going into the 2009s downwards we then see a change in the way the prince and princess dynamic is being written to which Entangled and the princess and the frog where you had the two being the princess and the prince spending longer screen time together rather than just focusing on on one side's point of view, be it the prince or the princess. This is in contrast to the just love interest trope that existed in the past. We can see this with Fiona and the frog and also with Flynn Rider and Rapunzel, where both of them respectively share more screen time understanding each other. Uniquely, Frozen represents a paradigm shift in Disney storytelling and it relies on subverting the preconceived notions of the viewers. Frozen had two prince, one being Prince Hans, who was born into a noble family but turns out to be the villain and Kristoff who is similar to Flynn Rider. Now Kristoff is the love interest of Anna but their relationship is pretty much inconsequential because Frozen's message is deeply rooted in sisterhood rather than the love story. This whole love interest thing is kind of like a back burner story or a side story. So in Frozen 2, Kristoff barely has that much screen time and when he does, he's stuck in a marriage proposal side plot while Anna and Elsa saves 
the kingdom. Now, if you notice with Frozen, we have gone back to the prince playing the minor character role and literally existing for the sake of marriage or being a love interest. The prince archetype now reaches its final evolution with Moana. Moana did something that was unique back then. They completely eliminated the prince archetype. And even with this, it absolutely did not dwindle the success of the movie. In fact, it bolstered the movie because then without the love interest plot, there were more story arcs to explore with Maui and Moana. Now with the success of Moana, Disney kept on doing the same. Ryan the Last Dragon, no prince, no love interest. Encanto, the same thing. Disney had now found out that the prince archetype is pretty much not useful at all and they've made sure it stayed absent ever since. So that means the prince archetype is now endangered. So we need to ask ourselves, is this a bad thing? Over the years throughout the evolution of the prince character type, you see it go from not functional to somewhat functional to functional and then to extinct. Now it's not really much of a surprise that we see this pattern. Aladdin was the only attempt in my opinion that had a Disney prince as the MC of the movie. You see as much as we might ask why don't we have more Disney prince in an MC role, the truth is it's not actually needed. Disney as early as the 1930s had started building an empire based on the theme of princesses. These different princess stories are gotten from fairy tales. Fairy tales served as their source material. These stories normally have the damsel in distress theme with the prince swooping in and being the savior of the story. Now because of how these fairy tales go, most of the early Disney movies focus on the princess and the trouble she gets into, making us understand her ordeal in order to make us care about her. A critique that we normally hear over the years was that these fairy tales did not have the right depiction of the female gender. They normally depicted the female gender as overly dependent and needed to be saved. Over the years there's been a debate on whether this is a good concept for young girls to grow up with. And I I think personally that this inspired the shift in storytelling and writing from the Disney Renaissance period downwards with princess characters being more independent and empowered per se. So definitely the source material plays a huge role in the prevalence of princess movies in the Disney lineup. Another reason is also the commercial impact that these princess movies have on Disney. The truth is they make a lot of money for them with the two Frozen movies combined making an upwards of two billion dollars for Disney and we are not even including merchandising. The appeal for the princess market is one that Disney has built over the years and it still remains the biggest money makers for them. Changing this for a Prince MC movie, well, doesn't play into that appeal. Now, moving to the question of Disney princes going extinct. I think this is more of a problem because it clearly puts to frame that Disney is kind of pushing an agenda other than making inclusive movies that they say they do. Now, I might be paranoid, but hear me out. Out. Throughout the Disney revival era, we've had a unique blueprint to how Disney has little by little drained out the need of the prince archetype to where we are today where they are not needed anymore. Now I'm not saying I sat down to watch Disney movies because the princes were so inspiring or so brilliant. No, no, I, I did not sit down to watch a Disney movie because of the prince. But completely eliminating an archetype that which does appease and somewhat inspire a specific part of society seems a bit harsh. Even with the live actions too, we can also see this blueprint with the princes. Yeah, Prince Eric does have more screen time in the Little Mermaid live action remake, but he's also way more redundant this time around. It's kind of like they wanted to keep him, but they didn't want to need him, if that actually makes any sense. And also with what Rachel Zegler is saying about the live action remake of Snow White, we could expect a total elimination of the prince. After all, he barely even has screen time in the original. Now, with all that said, the evolution of the Disney prince archetype is one I find very odd and it does show where Disney storytelling are heading to. Now Disney has not been hitting the mark when it comes to their movies lately. They could look at maybe the love interest plots as maybe a probable thing for them to explore. I don't know but it will be interesting to see how Disney goes on with the rest of their movie lineups in the future. We'll see. So um, I hope you all were able to understand more about the whole Disney Prince evolution and archetype. And maybe I agree with me on some points because um, I do know some of the points I made were more subjective to my own opinion. And um, which, which, which is not bad, which is not bad. We could, we could share totally different points. Um, so yeah, if you disagree with me or you agree with me, please do leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll be there 
replying and uh, yeah thank you for watching the video god loves you and i love you too bye, -bye.